Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Laurie. I appreciate you tuning in and I wanted to hopefully go over something today. Uh, it's kind of an add-on to what Joy did earlier. I know that Joy in January did some tips on how to make prairie points. So she was very thorough. She showed you exactly start to finish how to get the prairie points made. So I'm going to do a quick review of that. And then I'm going to show you some other things, some tips with the prairie points after we get them made, how you attach them to your quilt, and so forth. I know there were a few questions out there on, if I put my, my prairie points on, can I take it to the quilter? Is it going to be a problem? Because they do, they can stick up. So I'm going to show you a trick how to manage that. Because it's kind of hard to get your prairie points in after you've already put your border your borders on and you're going to want the borders on before you take it to a quilter. So I'm going to show you a trick what you can do that way your quilter is happy with you. So to start with I'm just going to show you the prairie points out of our Hello Sunshine uh, manual. So to start with you you cut a four inch by 20 inch piece. So I've got this cut and then once you have it cut I'm a little it's ahead of myself you're just gonna fold it in half and iron it, just the whole thing. And after it's ironed, then I come back, and you can see I've already pre-cut it, simply for ease, um, but you're gonna mark a line every two inches up to that middle fold. And like I say, this is just a quick review of what Joy already had covered. And then on the other side, you're gonna mark off an inch and then every two inches, every two inches, you're going to continue that line. And if you note, you can see where those lines are kind of staggered. They are not right side by side. Then you take your scissors and you cut up to the middle line on every one of those lines that you drew. And then you come, you'll want to take it probably to an ironing board. And these few I've ironed. And as you can see, I've used starch because when I let go, they pop right back. That's what you want. So to start with, it looks like this. You fold it halfway and you'll fold the next one and you'll fold the next one and then you'll take it and you'll iron them. So I've used starch to iron these Oops. and they stay that way. Then you take the bottom ones and you do the same thing. You're going to fold it up and they look like they're making like little sharp little blades. This is going to be grass, so that's perfect, right? So then you're going to fold that up. So then you have them folded this way, and then you're going to fold it down again. And what it does is it creates a nice edge that's got zero raw edges. All your raw edges are in the middle. So I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. And then I highly recommend starch it well and iron it well so that it stays together for you. So that's what it'll look like when you've got them all folded and starched. And then you're gonna take the whole row after you've done all of them and you're gonna fold them all one direction. And that's the trickiest part is once you get them folded all one direction, you starch it, it's still, they keep coming unfolded or untucked. So my next tip would be, I'll show you right here. So my next tip, and I did it in black so you could see, I like to stitch along the bottom about, not quite an eighth of an inch, between 1 16th and 1 eighth of an inch. And that's just enough to hold these so it's all one piece. Um, and it's they're not coming unflapped on you. So then when you take it to your square or your block that you're gonna attach it to, you can pin it on. I've shown you where I've pinned it on and pin it all the way across. And then on the yellow stitches, that's about an eighth of an inch up, I've stitched it just to give it a nice tack down so it's ready and it's part of my block now. And then you can sew it in. So for example, if you were sewing it in and your border would come along here, you're gonna sew it a quarter of an inch so it's gonna hide all of the stitching that you've already done previous. So now let's, uh, I'll show you then once you get to this point you do trim the two edges off so it actually looks like it's part of your block. Once you've done that, and we'll take the pins out, 
and you've sewn it into your quilt. Um, I baste it. I don't know if you can see this yellow basting stitch. Baste it down, and that way it's not going to catch in the embroideries, your quilter's embroidery arm for when they're, unless you're hand stitching it or hand uh, quilting it, then you wouldn't need to. But if you baste that down, then it holds it in place so that you can take that to the quilter. And I know that was one of the questions that somebody had is they said, well, if I baste it, I won't be able to get my stitches out. But if you baste it at least at like a five or a six inch or five to six millimeters, excuse me, uh, stitch length, you'll easily be able to unpick those. That's a good size basting stitch. And that way you can get it to the quilter, you can get it back and just unpick those basting stitches. It doesn't take too long. And you can actually still unpick them from the top. You don't need to be able to get behind them. You can just unpick them from the top and pull that thread and it will come right out. So that was, that's uh, hopefully answers a few questions. I know I've seen those questions around on Facebook. So I'm hoping that that will help. And let me know if there's any other tips that you have or you have tried and it's worked for you on Prairie Points. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week.